things lord receive our praises in jesus name we give you all the glory all the honor all the adoration we thank you for sparing our lives we thank you for protecting us all the while we thank you for the beautiful opportunity to be at your feet again lord be exalted in jesus name eternal rock of ages at the end of this meeting let us be mightily blessed in jesus name share with us your truth let the holy spirit minister to us in jesus name in jesus mighty name we are praying Please be seated. Thank you, Choir. I'm just going to charge us for a few minutes. I, I'm sure you know that I'm not the one speaking for today. We have a mother in the house, and God will be ministering through her. But it's very important to just say a few things, get ourselves ready, and we'll get into what we have for today. Please let me speak to you from the bottom of my heart. Over time, it has been a real struggle getting young people together. And not just young people, youth in this axis. And we don't think that it should be that hard. But again, one of the other things that we find is that if you realize how much God has in stock for you and how much God wants to also do through you as a young person, then it will be a big problem trying to get you together for the things of God. As young people, we must understand that God is so much interested in us and there is so much God wants to do. In fact, let me say that there is so much He cannot do because of the availability of young people. Not that those things will not be done, but he wants to trust a lot of things into the hands of young people. And if we're not showing the commitment, if we're not available, if we're not going to be the one that will be sent by God, then he will look for alternatives. And it will not be nice that, you know, we just come in, worship God casually, and a few things that we should also learn at this stage, we're not learning them, then we begin to learn by experience. So let me say this. You know that there are two major ways to learn from experience in life. You can learn from the experiences of others, and you can learn from your own experience. Over the years we have heard experience is the best teacher. How many of you have heard that? That statement is not actually correct. We should add it or we should alter it a little. Your personal experience is not your best teacher. The experiences of other people is your best teacher. Because there are some experiences that you may not survive. So if you don't survive that experience, how will it teach you? And there are some things you don't need to experience. Because you can learn from the experiences of other people. So, if you will be wise enough to just spend some time today and learn a lot of things from the experiences of other people, you'll be saving yourself a lot of time. You'll be saving yourself a lot of pain and agony. There are people today who come to church and they smile. The makeup is the only thing that's covering the pains that they're going through. It's the nice dresses that are covering the agony that they are in. They are not feeling good at all. But you know, somebody can be looking good and not feeling good. That's one of the reasons for this. So it's very important that we take this seriously. And not only take it seriously, we go to it from time to time. We we'll revisit what has to be said today and be sure that we're making use of what is being said. I bet you, okay, we're not supposed to bet in the house of God, <laughs> but I can assure you that whatever you're taught today, if you will hold on to it, it will look like I'm prophesying, but really it's just what it is. You'll be saving yourself, you can save yourself from the agony of 20 years to come. You can save yourself from the agony of 30 years to come. And of course, you know, you heard from men who would say that the reason I see father 
is because I sit on the shoulders of men who have gone ahead. So let's take every opportunity to learn at the feet of those who have gone ahead of us seriously. And not only just sit and hear them, it's also very important to put to use those things that we have learned. Please, I am strongly appealing that we take this thing seriously. I think I've said that a couple of times now within this short time. And why am I saying this? I have seen people whose lives have been wasted. And I mean terribly wasted. You've heard of all sorts of stories about women who were killed by their husbands, men who were killed by their wives, so many people who have been irredeemably destroyed as a result of choices that they were making. And the only thing they were destroyed by their own choices is because those choices were uninformed choices or ill-informed choices. So it's very, very key that you listen. And the other part to it is, because I will not try to look, make it look like everything is easy, some of the things you will hear now, some of the counsel that you will get, I bet they will not look nice. Sometimes, the counsel will not sound appealing to your ears. It may require that you discipline yourself. It may require that you deny yourself. The counsel may even look, as we used to say in those days, it may sound very spiritual. But whatever the counsel is, a godly counsel will always save you from so much more than you can ever imagine. So, it's a rare privilege for us and I believe that we will maximize it. But before our mom comes up again, let me also say that we're putting a few things in place. We're doing quite a lot to ensure that the youth forum becomes a lot more active than what it is right now. I am not particularly impressed by participation in a lot of our programs so far. It has not been encouraging at all. The last time we had a prayer summit, I think we, have, we, we had quite a lot of adults who even joined us compared to the number of youths that came in. Young people, can I please tell you that if there is any time to pray at all, this is the time to pray. If I had some of the understanding I was telling you about, I bet that when I was a school child, or when I was in my secondary school days, even though I had a little understanding and I was doing some of these things then, I was already praying about my future, I would have spent more time doing it I will spend more zeal and passion praying about today and today will be a lot better than what it is right now. Ten years is not too far away. Five years is not too far away. Don't think it is far. So the prayer that you do today is the seed that you sow for the next five years. So if you are complaining or if you don't like what your life is today, how much of praying did you do five years ago or two years ago or even last year? And how much of learning did you do before now? So if your life is not what it is, check what you were doing before. That's your investments. That's your seed. So you need to take care of those things properly. We're also doing a program in April. We're still putting it in place. There are final, uh, let me say, finishing touches going on on that. I want to beg you, don't take things that we do, the programs, don't take them with levity. And I seize the opportunity to commend the executives of the youth. I've been impressed so far with the little that we've done this year, even though I'm driving them a little and I'm pushing them to let them know, look, we're not doing half of what we should be doing yet. But I've been impressed so far. A lot of the programs that we have seen so far, they're the ones spending their resources, maybe with a few other people, getting things done. So don't let their investments go down the drain. Let's you know, come together, let's also save ourselves from the agony, as I said, of 10 years to come, 5 years to come, and we will be a lot better. Our lives will improve. And the other one is, I understand that quite a number of us are going through one challenge or the other. Things seem pretty rough, especially around here. And I can tell you, from what I know, that sometimes, what you expect as the answer to the rough situation is not what will be the answer. It could just be your dedication to God. It could be your resolute decision to serve God 
that eventually provides the answer to those rough times. Your rough times, your period of challenges, are not the period to stay away from God. If there is any time to get closer to God, it's when things are rough, it's when you don't understand what is going on in your life. I once had Bishop David Abiyu say, if you don't understand what is going on in your life, pray in a language that you don't understand. And what's the language that we don't understand? The Holy Ghost. So please, whatever it is that you're going through, there is nothing you're going through that will not be resolved. There is nothing you're going through that will not be dissolved. If it is that you don't have a job today, I always believe that some of you who don't have a job now, it could be before the end of this year, it could be sometimes next year, it could be very soon, you will be employing other people. But please, stay strong. Don't get, don't stay far from the church, and not just the church. Don't stay away from fellowshipping together. Don't say because of what you're going through, you now stay away. This is where you need the strength. This is where you get all the encouragement, all the right encouragement. Let me put it that way. This is where you get it. And I pray God will continue to help you. God will continue to strengthen you in Jesus' name. Whatever it is that you're going through, God will help you in Jesus' name. And I want to pray for someone here. Those, the confusion that you're going through right now, God will send help in Jesus' name. Amen. Supernaturally, it will be resolved in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever it is that seems to be holding you back in life, God will begin to send help in Jesus' name. Amen. Just like the grave could not hold Jesus down, those issues will not be able to hold you down anymore. Amen. You'll be free in Jesus' name. Amen. You'll move forward in Jesus' name. Amen. God will send you real joy in the name of Jesus. Amen. And He will help you. Your life will be full of testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. Every regret. God will turn them around. They will become your source of joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Stay blessed and please stay in the fold of God. Thank you.